We are in the second week of five weeks devoted to St. John's Gospel, Chapter 6, the Bread of Life Discourse, the Eucharistic Discourse, where we heard today Jesus say, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. And so it's my hope today to help you be lost in the love of Jesus, to be lost in his Eucharistic love. Now, what does it mean to be lost in love? Well, it's when you start believing in the other person that you love more than you believe in yourself. It's when you start investing all your energy and time to keep the other person happy. And you get so involved that you lose yourself in the process. But it's amazing when you lose yourself in love of Jesus, you actually find yourself. Jesus in the Gospels teaches, unless you lose your life, you will not find it. He's talking about eternal life. And so, it's all about love. That's what the Eucharist is about. Jesus, in the Most Holy Eucharist, is giving us his body as true food and his blood as true drink so we may have a communion of life with him to share his body and his blood and his soul and participate in his divinity by grace. Jesus loves us so much. He's lost in love of the Father, in the Holy Spirit, and in love of us that he sacrifices his body on the cross to show us true love. He's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about glorifying the Father in the Holy Spirit. He's thinking about saving us so that we can be with him for all eternity in love. Talk about being lost in love. That's what we're created for, brothers and sisters. Jesus pours out all his blood in love of the Father, in the Holy Spirit, and for love of us. We need to grow to that point in our journey, to be willing to give our whole lives our bodies, our blood, our minds, our hearts, our feelings, our wills, our sentiments, our desires, to give it all to Jesus. And in Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, to give it to the Father. And that love will then pour out to other people in our lives. I hope this is getting you excited I mean, there's all kinds of songs out there about being lost in love. A long time ago, there was this group that sang all these romantic songs called Air Supply. Long time ago. It's a great name, actually, for a band, Air Supply. Think about the necessity of air. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God poured out into our hearts the love of God so we can love God and love others. We need the air supply of the Holy Spirit. And we need the Holy Spirit in that love to help us be lost in love of Jesus. And so I hope you all learn how to contemplate, which means to look face to face with Jesus to relate heart to heart with Jesus and to learn really how to enter into the Eucharist. You want to learn how to 
experience Jesus looking at you with a loving gaze. Just sit before Jesus in the Eucharist and just let him look on you with a loving gaze as if you're the only person who ever lived and he's willing to die for you and he did die for you. <laughs> now that's an amazing way to live. Jesus wants us to remain in love with him, so he came and showed us what love is by going to the cross, but before he went to the cross, he instituted the gift of the Eucharist at the Last Supper. And that gift is given to us in every holy sacrifice, the Mass. There's only one Mass, the Mass of the Last Supper going all the way through Good Friday where Jesus gives up his life after tremendous suffering with Mary at the foot of the cross, Mary's lost in that love of Jesus. Her whole life is given to Jesus. We need to learn from Mary how to give our whole life to Jesus. And he's offering himself to the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's what the whole holy sacrifice of the Mass is about. And so we want to learn how to remain in his love as he remains in love with us. So that's the foundation. Are you with me so far? This whole homily is about being lost in the love of Jesus. Lost in the Eucharistic love of Jesus, okay? So we're in St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, which is so rich in revealing to us the gift of the most holy Eucharist. And the Gospel, as you know, begins with the multiplication of the loaves and the fish where Jesus takes five barley loaves and two fish. He takes them. He gives thanks to the Father. He blesses them and he breaks them to give them away. That's what he does with us. And with only five barley loaves and two fish, he feeds 5,000 men. What a miracle. And when you say 5,000 men, that would probably mean 5,000 women and let's say another 10,000 children. You're talking about 20,000 people, right? And there were still 12 wicker baskets left over because Jesus will work miracles of love that never end. But why did he work that miracle? To prepare them to be taught about the Eucharist to be taught about the bread of life. And then after that is when he, they want to make him king. And, and, and he didn't come to become an earthly king. He's the king of the whole universe, of all creation. He's more interested in our salvation and our love than he is in earthly kingdoms. But he's going to try to teach us not to be so caught up into earthly things that pass away and to work for the food that lasts forever, and that food is Jesus himself. Jesus lasts forever, okay? That's what we're going to get to in today's gospel. <clears throat> but before we go deeper into that teaching, let's realize he stepped away, he prayed, and then that's when he walked on the water. A great miracle, showing his divinity. Jesus Christ is God who assumed our human nature to be able to go to a cross and lay down his life, give up his body and pour out his blood and give us his soul, which is his mind, his heart, his feelings, to see the way he sees, to think the way he thinks, to live in a way of holiness and truth and righteousness and truth that we heard about in the second reading. That's how we're supposed to live. We hear in Scripture, be holy, for God is holy. We are God's children. And God's going to feed his children. But not just with food that, that fills us up for a few hours. Not with food that just passes away. But with the food that lasts forever, himself. So he walks on the water to teach us who he is. Well, then we enter into today's gospel, which begins at verse 24 and goes to <clears throat> verse 35 today in St. John's Gospel, chapter 6. 
And so when they saw that Jesus was no longer there where he fed them with the multiplications of the loaves and the fish, and they didn't know that he had walked across the waters, the disciples did, and he did that to strengthen their faith and to strengthen our faith. Now they're looking for him. So they get in boats and they go to Capernaum looking for him. And just like humans, you know, we always, when we want something, we have a way of trying to approach people to get what we want. But let's realize many times the things we want are more limited than what God wants to give us. And so they want food. They want fish and they want bread. Well, yes, to have an, a king that would feed you with fish and bread for the rest of your life, you know, that'd be okay. But just like the Israelites in the first reading who were fed with the manna from heaven, the bread from heaven that prefigured the real bread from heaven. Anytime something prefigures something, the reality is greater than the prefigurement. So the manna that came from heaven, which prefigured the Eucharist, was just a foreshadowing of the reality. It fed them day by day, one day at a time, but they would be hungry the next day. And they eventually died. Jesus is talking about a bread that will fill you forever and you will never die. Being filled with Christ, that's the food, that's the bread of life, Christ. Is Christ the love of your life? Are you, are you lost in love of Jesus? If you get lost in the love of Jesus, he's going to take care of everything and you're going to be happy for all eternity. That's the point of this homily. And he does that with the Eucharist because he loves us so much. So they come to him and they say, Rabbi, when did you get here? He doesn't tell them, well, I walked across the water and I got here, you know, at this certain time. Jesus is always lifting us to a higher level. That's what he does. And so Jesus calls them out, though, and he says, amen, amen, I say to you, you are not looking for me or he says, amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate loaves and were filled. He calls them out. You just want to get loaves and fish. But I have something greater to offer you. And I want you to understand the sign. The sign of the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. I want you to understand the whole Old Testament, the, the signs of the manna in the desert, all those signs that are going to point to the Eucharist that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you myself to be in communion with you for all eternity because I love you and I want you to love me. And so Jesus says, do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life or for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Now, this is at the heart of it today. It's all about love. And Jesus says, don't work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. We have to ask ourselves today, brothers and sisters, what are we working for? Do we spend all of our time and energy and effort working for food that will fill us at one moment and we'll be hungry five or six hours later? Now, we need food to exist, but are we really working for Christ, for the food of eternal life that he will give us? Remember, everything in this world is passing. Everything. Everything. But so many people spend their lives looking for power or honor or fame, and it's all passing. They look for pleasure. They look for vanities. They look for honors. All of it's passing. We need to keep our focus on Christ, and every other good thing will be given to us. Let's work for the food for eternal life. Jesus 
states clearly the Father God has set his seal on Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. Jesus is God, the second person of the Trinity. Since he's God, he can give us himself. When he says, this is my body, which will be given up for you, it becomes his body because he's God. And when God speaks and says, let there be light, there's light. When he says, this is my blood, it's his blood that he pours out for the life of the world. He's God. And so after Jesus says this, they say to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answers them and says, and this is very important, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Now, every time you hear the word believe in the New Testament, it comes from a Greek word called pisteo or pistuo, however you want to say it, but pisteo, which doesn't mean that you just believe that Jesus exists. The devil believes Jesus exists. That's a fact. Jesus is God. To believe means to know Jesus in a living relationship a covenantal relationship, a sacramental relationship that you're given in the Catholic Church. Not just a personal relationship, but a sacramental relationship and a covenantal relationship that begins with baptism. And the source and the summit of our faith is the Eucharist, where Jesus gives us himself body, blood, soul, and divinity. He feeds us with himself, a sacramental relationship, and we're in a covenant. His life for ours, our life for his. That's it. To believe means to know intimately and to put into practice that relationship and the teachings that he gave. Keep the commandments. Live the teachings of Jesus Christ. Be a faithful Catholic and a faithful Christian. Work for the food that lasts for eternal life. And so this is the work we're supposed to be about. Believing in the one that the Father sent into this world to reveal God's love for us. And so, we'll jump to the conclusion to reiterate. After they said, sir, give us this bread always, Jesus said clearly, I am the bread of life. Whenever you hear I am, that's the sacred name. Remember, God revealed his name to Moses on the holy mountain. He said, I am who am. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Come to Jesus. Believe in Jesus. And he will fill the deepest longings and desires of your heart. He will satisfy your thirst. He wants to have a communion of life with you forever. Accept the invitation and help others accept the invitation. Be lost in love of Jesus. Be lost in the Eucharistic love of Jesus. Ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was lost in that love her whole life. Look at every mystery of the Holy Rosary. She stood there right at the foot of the cross, but she was also there at the resurrection and his ascension and helped the early church get started. And our mother Mary will help us Learn how to be lost in the love of Jesus, in his Eucharistic love. Please take this message to heart, because this is about your life and working for what really matters. Believe in Jesus and conform your life to him. Become saints. Amen. Amen.